so today we're gonna take it up just a little notch not a lot this is a, a gonna be a, a really good pattern to tie I use it a lot um, so I'm sticking with that you know idea of um, showing you how to tie flies that I actually do use a lot um, and this will be a dry fly and um, it'll be the first dry fly that um, we've we've tried to film so far um, I've got this on a, a fire hole um, size 14 uh, 618 hook much bigger than what I usually tie usually it'll be on a an 18 or a 20 or a 22 but just so you can see it I wanted to make sure it was big enough we'll be using uh, the Semper fly nano silk and olive uh, that is almost indestructible we'll be using some brassy size copper you can really use just about any um, color of wire on this particular pattern we'll also be using some super fine dubbing uh, from the dubbing dispenser here and we will be um, using a, a hackle um, so here we have uh, a furnace hackle um, and we'll show you how to get the right size uh, of hackle feather um, when you're working on tying one of these flies so the, the fly we're going to tie is a uh, elk hair caddis um, except it's not it's it's a deer hair caddis I, I, I prefer to tie it with deer hair and you'll see I'm going to tie it also with a bleached um, deer hair which makes it much easier for me to see on the water um, and the deer hair elk hair for that matter um, it won't sink um, it's just about impossible to sink uh, so we're going to go ahead and start um, with getting our thread secured here on our hook and take a few wraps leaving a little bit of a gap there um, behind the eye of the hook and then we're just gonna go ahead and bring this back little ways here I've got a big gob of wax on my thread there and I'm just gonna smear that on down there we go okay so I've got my my thread on my hook and then because this is the nano silk um, probably notice that it's you can hardly even see it it barely leaves a trace um, and it's very it it's very hard to break as well which is will come in handy as we're tying this uh, particular pattern so I'm going to go ahead and bring my thread on back um, towards the bend of the hook um, right about to where you know the barb would be um, this is a barbless hook so there isn't a barb on it but this is about where it would be um, now I'll just go ahead and bring that thread a little bit forward and we're going to go ahead and grab our first material which is going to be that um, copper uh, wire and I'm using brassy size you could use gold you can use silver um, for the most part this is just going to make your fly more durable um, it'll add a little bit of ribbing um, but it's not going to be really overly visible so it's not going to matter too much what color um, whether it's copper gold or silver um, so I'm just going to secure it there on the, the side of the hook that's nearest um, to the, the lens of the camera and uh, we're going to just now that I've got it kind of secured there I'm just going to pull it backwards and draw it back to about where I want the abdomen to end which is going to be right about there um, and that that just saves me from uh, having to cut that copper which saves my scissors um, if you are going to cut the wire with your scissors um, take it deep <laughs> take it deep in your scissors um, what I mean by that is don't use the fine wonderful points on your scissors go clear back here um, that's that will at least not dull the front side of, of your scissors so I've got my uh, copper uh, tied back here to where I want the abdomen to start and the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put some of our we're going to put our super fine on here and I'm going to get myself a little bit of thread I'm gonna put a little bit of wax on here um, not necessarily essential but and then we'll grab our our, our pack of uh, super fine dubbing we'll go ahead and do this one today in a kind of a, a lighter color a light Cahill um, and that will allow you to hopefully see it a little bit better and when I'm pulling my dubbing out of the the pack here 
and I'm hoping you can see um, several of the, the holes on the dubbing dispenser here. Um, you can see that fine dubbing, and that's why it's called super fine, is it's very, very fine. Um, I'm going to pull a little bit out, just a little bit at a time like that. So um, I've got a little bunch there, and then I'm going to grab it, and I'm just going to slowly pull it up and out, and that's going to give me a a really light um, amount, uh, which is what you want. For today, we're just going to finger dub this on. Um, not going to use a dubbing a, a dubbing loop here today. So I'm just going to finger dub it. Get my get that all started there. Tighten it up here a little on that side. And it's okay that I, I have a little distance towards the back of the hook because I'm going to kind of navigate back here with just bare thread until I get right here to the very back end of my hook. And now um, I'll start working my way forward. So the caddis fly, uh, the body is, uh, they, they tend to be very um, streamlined, narrow. Um, there's going to be a little bit of a taper, but we don't want a big bulky abdomen here. We really want a fairly narrow abdomen here. Um, and it will taper a little bit. So um, we're out of... I've run out of dubbing there, so I'm going to just grab myself a tiny little bit more because I just have a tiny little bit more that I need to do. So go ahead and grab that and let's get that um, going on my thread here. Slide it up. Take a few wraps here a tiny little bit more just to give myself a little bit more of a taper and like I've said before um, I tie because I enjoy it um, I'm not going for speed I'm not going for a record I just I enjoy it um, so I'll take my time with this I don't care I'm not trying to tie 40 of these up today um, so we'll go ahead and got a little bit more on and we'll take it a little bit back here and then we'll bring it back up to the front again and I'll just try to keep that tight with my fingers so now I've got that and hopefully you can see now we've got even more of a of a taper and it is a little fuzzy and this is a macro lens so you're seeing every um, imperfection um, which when I'm tying flies there's gonna be a lot of imperfections um, so we've got our dubbing on, we've got our wire on, our wire rib. Uh, the next thing that we need to do is we need to get our hackle on. Um, so again, I'm using a furnace um, hackle. There, there are a couple of ways that you can kind of decide whether it's big enough or the right size of hackle for you. One is you can actually just wrap it around the hook like that. And I can get a pretty good glimpse at what's going on there. And um, I'm kind of cheating because I selected this one a little bit beforehand, but um, that's about the size that I want. So I've got the, I got the end of my, my hackle feather here. And basically I'm just going to kind of pull backwards with my fingers um, until we see it kind of uh, that end sticking out like that. And what we're going to do is we're going to strip these fibers off of the stem of the hook just by pinching them and pulling them off and they'll come right off for you. So now we've got a really nice and clean stem uh, to work with. Um, we're going to tie this in right kind of where my thread is and I'm going to want the um, the shiny or the dark part of the feather facing towards the eye of the hook. I'm going to take my thread around and start that, and then I'm going to go ahead and capture um, the stem. And I'll show you in just a second, um, but when I capture that stem, I'm actually going to, um, I'm going to leave some of it bare um, for some of the, for the first wraps around the hook. I'm going to use my rotary here um, just to pull this sideways, see that stem well, clip it off with my trusty scissors and we'll just go ahead and secure that down we'll bring this back uh, to where we were and usually I'll, I'll, I'll throw in a couple of thread wraps behind uh, this feather as well this hackle feather uh, just to help secure it in place it, it's not really going to go anywhere 
Um, so I'm going to get a, a set of hackle pliers. And um, I don't know if you have to be really patient with this. I did um, when I first started. Um, working with hackle can be a bit of a challenge. Uh, if you don't secure it, it'll come undone, then off the hook. Um, if you put too much pressure on it, it breaks very easily. Um, and if you don't put enough pressure on it, it won't stand up straight. Um, so it can be a little bit of trial and error, and I've had to learn over the years about the right tension, and I still end up breaking it from time to time. Um, but you can see it's really loose here. Uh, but now I'm going to go ahead and stand it up. Uh, like that and that's what I mean by the using the rotary. I'm not going to wrap this around the hook with my hackle pliers I'm just holding my hackle pliers up above the fly. Okay, so we're going to keep that tension um, Not too much or it'll, it'll break that off and the bare portion of that stem is going to help us get you know that very first You want one really good wrap at the front to make sure that that's there and then we're going to slowly work our hackle back towards the bend of the hook um, with even space wraps and as we approach the uh, point of the hook we're going to want to be really careful because the point of that hook will immediately just snap that uh, go right through your hackle and then you'll be starting over from scratch again and tying on another, another piece of hackle or another hackle feather um, so here we go and I am kind of exaggerating that a little bit to keep that away from. Breaking off. Okay, so I, I'm going to keep some tension on uh, my hack. I'm not pulling it tight because I don't want it to necessarily break, but I do uh, need to get that secured in place. And I'm going to secure it with, a, with my copper wire back that I left hanging back here for my ribbing. Um, so I'm not actually securing it with thread. I'm actually securing my hackle back here with my wire. And uh, my bobbin decided it wanted to jump off. So um, at this point, it should be my hackle should be secure so I can let go of it. Um, we're free and clear um, from the pliers. Um, and you can see it's, uh, you know, my hackle sticking out here in the back. We're going to just continue to rib um, this this copper moving forward and you'll notice that I'm just you know doing even spaced wraps um, and it's it just you, you know you think it's going to trap down all of that hackle fiber but it really it, it really doesn't you can pretty much travel up to the front of the hook here um, without too much trouble now I'll um, go ahead and take my bobbin cradle let it fall down and we're gonna put in a couple of wraps here to secure our copper wire down. I'll take a few more wraps. That thread is starting to fray a little bit. So I'm going to go back up towards the front of the hook and that ain't going anywhere. Okay, so now I can just helicopter with friction my copper wire until it comes off um, nice and close. Um, I can also grab my scissors at this point um, and clip off my um, trying to do it in the way you can see it but the the balance of that hackle and I might have plenty left there to do two or three more flies probably lock that stuff down and that's about where I want my deer um, uh, hair to my wing to start um, so I'm going to just go ahead and let my thread hang there I'm going to reach over and dig through my stuff and uh, find my here's my bleached uh, deer hair I like the bleached. Um, I don't know that the fish really pay that much attention to it, but the reason I like it is because I'm getting old and I can actually see um, the bleached hair on the water much better. So I'm just going to grab a clump out of here. Um, but one thing you might notice is there's a lot of fuzz in there. Um, I'm actually going to um, remove a few of these because I think I've got more than I need. Um, but this, the, the fuzz here is the under hair. Um, on the on the deer um, on the deer skin and I want to get rid of that um, so I'm going to use this uh, comb here and I'm just gonna you know go ahead and stick my deer hair through there I'm gonna I'm pinching it really really tight so that it doesn't all come out of my the deer hair doesn't all come out of my fingers I'm gonna run it through there a few times um, and that's gonna help me get that under hair out of here um, and that's kind of important because um, uh, 
that wing is going to secure much better to the shank of the hook um, if you don't have that under hair in there. So now we're pretty close to being in business. I still have a little bit of fuzz there. So here, here are my butt ends that I cut off um, from the back. Here's the front um, here. And our next operation is we've got to stack this. This part is kind of like the barrel and it's kind of funnel shaped, which is nice because it helps those, those deer hairs or whatever hair you're using kind of capture in there. So I'm just going to take my deer hair and my hair stacker and I've got my deer hair. I let it all drop in there. So it's just standing vertically in there with the butt ends that I cut um, near the top that, you know, hopefully you're seeing at this point. Um, and I'm going to bring this thing up so it's vertical and just tap it on my table. You know, six or seven or eight or ten or fifteen times or sometimes I, I'm not paying attention and do it for five minutes. Not really, but... Okay, so now I've got it there. I'm going to turn it back to horizontal and very carefully um, I'm going to pull the bottom half off. Uh, we've got one stray. I'm just going to pull him off. Uh, but you can see now those are nice and aligned. Um, and that's what the, the hair stacker is for, is to get all of those, um, the ends of that hair aligned in uh, even. Uh, once I have it here, I'm going to pinch this, and I'm going to pinch it pretty tight because I want to keep that alignment. Uh, I will switch hands um, back and forth, but every time I switch hands, I'm going to make sure that I am grabbing and pinching very, very tight. Um, so I am maintaining that um, the even uh, stack of hair there. I'm going to want this, this wing to be about, you know, not much beyond the bend of the hook. So I'm basically measuring here. Um, and that's going to show me where I need to make my cut on my deer hair. So I'm going to want to make my cut probably right around in here. Um, when I first started to, um, tying these uh, deer hair elk hair caddises, um, I used to just tie that whole big bunch on there, and then I would trim it, uh, what was remaining with my scissors. And by watching other people do it, I've learned that that's really not the best way to do it. Um, so I'm not actually going to have to trim this at all. Um, and you'll see as I wrap my thread around it, it's going to pull it in tight. It's going to keep that wing in place. Um, it's also going to cause these butt ends to kind of flare out and create a nice little head. Um, and this is, this is one of those places where thread control comes in really handy. So I'm going to take my thread here and my bobbin. I'm going to spin it counterclockwise. And what that's going to do for me, you'll see here, is... Um, as I take my first wrap over the top, it's going to want to jump back towards my fingers, which is what I want. I want it to capture that. I don't want it to go off the end of the hook. So I'm going to put one wrap, pull a little bit. I'm going to take one more wrap, and I'm going to pull a little bit harder. Um, not so hard, I'm going to break the thread. But you can see, um, hopefully now, how, that, um, how this ballooned out. Um, and I don't need to go back in and trim it. Um, it's right where I want it. Um, my wing is nice and splayed out, um, just like a caddis wing should be. Um, I'm just going to throw a couple more thread wraps in here, and then we're just going to go ahead and whip finish um, this fly. Get my whip finisher out. Put it on, just like I've shown in my other videos. We'll just take a couple of wraps and that thread will just sink right down into that deer hair. Um, we'll pull it tight. We're all clear here. I may hold onto that wing as I pull that a little bit tighter. That's where the nano silk kind of comes in handy because um, I, I can pu put quite a bit of tension on this um, without it breaking the thread. Um, I'm now at a point where I can just cut that thread off. There we go. But, you know, there you, there you go. Um, here's the deer hair slash elk hair uh, caddis fly. Uh, the, the dry fly. Um, caddis flies are often um, on the water. It's one of the um, four main aquatic species of insects. 
Um, so caddis nymphs and caddis flies are, are things that you certainly are going to want in your arsenal. I would recommend going out on your local waters to look at the, the different color varieties uh, of uh, caddises that are hatching and they're going to hatch um, different species probably throughout the year. Um, so usually what I'll do is I'll tie up, um, you know, several um, in different colors in different sizes um, so I can match the hatch when I get out on the river. Um, you, like I said, this is a 14. I'll usually not tie it on a 14, usually an 18, 20, or 22. Um, so I might, you know, do five of them um, with uh, uh, this Cahill uh, color. Uh, tie them in eight, five and 18s. I'll do five more in 20. I'll do five more in a 22. Then I'll switch to like gray uh, uh, dubbing material and I'll do 18s, 20s and 22s. And then I'll switch to like an olive color, 18s, maybe five 18s, five 20s, five 22s. Then I've got them loaded up in my box. Um, I'm out on the river and a hatch happens. I can grab one. I can look at the size to see which size should I, should I be tying on. Thank mm -hmm. you.